Welcome to episode 88 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 87, our guest was Mark Shear discussing personal transformation. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 10 to 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses teaming up against burnout with Paula Davis. Based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Paula Davis is the founder and CEO of the Stress and Resilience Institute, a training and consulting firm that helps build resilient teams, leaders, and organizations. Paula is a former practicing lawyer, speaker, consultant, media contributor, and a stress and resilience expert who has designed and taught several resilience workshops to thousands of professionals around the world. Her articles on stress, burnout prevention, resilience, and thriving at work are prominently featured on her blogs in Forbes, Fast Company, and Psychology Today. She's the author of four ebooks and is a contributing author to several other books. Her expertise has been featured in and on O, The Oprah Magazine, Red Book, Men's Health, Time.com, Today.com, The Steve Harvey TV Show, Huffington Post Live, and a variety of media outlets. She has also been featured in and on The Lawyerist, Law360.com, various ABA webinars and publications, and The Woman's Law Journal. Let's welcome... Paula Davis. Paula, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, the business of business. Hey, Brian, how are you? So happy to be on. I'm great. Thanks for joining us today, Paula. Thank you. Paula, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in founding the Stress and Resilience Institute? I feel in a way that I'm sort of an entrepreneur at heart, but I made like a big uh, sort of pivot before I got back to where I think I felt like I should have gone all along. But so I am a lawyer by training. So I practiced law for seven years and ended up burning out during what became the last year of my law practice. And so it made me very interested to start my own business. I knew I had always wanted to have a business. I figured I would just do it once I, quote, retired from my law practice, thinking that that was going to be not when I was in my 30s. And so took that opportunity and uh, went back and got a master's degree in something called Applied Positive Psychology from the University of Pennsylvania. And it's essentially the study of workplace and human flourishing. What are the ingredients we need to feel a sense of well-being and thriving in in life and in work? Uh, And so I really wanted to be able to take those tools and that research and information and go back into the workplace to help people essentially not burn out and to see their work as a source of thriving and happiness instead of stressful and, and what have you. So I have been doing that since 2010. Well, you mentioned uh, the word burnout a couple of times, and that's the topic of this episode. It's teaming up against burnout. What is burnout? So burnout is really the chronic manifestation of stress at work. And there's a couple of important words to think about in that definition. The first one is chronic. We all feel a sense of stress from time to time, um, maybe more frequently than that at work. Um, But this is essentially stress that is at a high level and present over a period of time, and it's just not relieving itself, and it continues to either stay the, at the same high level or get worse. The other thing that's important about the definition is the, the word work or workplace. And so when the World Health Organization updated its definition or its information about burnout a few years ago, they were very keen to point out that if we're talking about burnout, we're talking about something that has a workplace context or association or root associated with it. So that's also important to know. Well, how's burnout different than stress? That's such a great question. That's probably one of my top two or three most frequently asked questions. And so I think about, I always think about it in terms of framing what we know are the big dimensions of burnout. So burnout is chronic physical and emotional exhaustion. So again, chronic being an important word more often than not over a period of time. It is also chronic 
cynicism or frustration. People annoy you. People bother you. You you notice an increase in those internal eye rolls happening, um, particularly around your clients or the people who you have felt called to serve and to help. And then there's also a sense of increased inefficacy. So I think about that as like, why bother? Who cares? Right. You start to notice more frequently, ah, doesn't matter anyway. There's nothing I can do around here. You know, this is just the way that it's going to be. And you start to disengage in a number of ways from your work. So burnout is those three components. And so you know that stress can come from anywhere. Stress can come from our daily commute. It can come from having an, a bad conversation with our teenager last night to a whole host or source of things. But typically our stress can elevate and then it alleviates and elevates and alleviates. And it's when we notice that we're gravitating toward those three pieces, that chronic cynicism, frustration, and feeling that why bother, who cares, that we've gone into something that looks different than just your regular old everyday stress. We're speaking with Paula Davis, founder and CEO of the Stress and Resilience Institute. Paula, what are the six core drivers of burnout at work? So this is such an important question and an important conversation to have. And when I'm giving my workshops and talking to leaders and teams, I always tell them, like, if you're going to like remember anything that I say or print a slide from what we're talking about or capture something to remember going forward, it's this framework. And so what, what we oftentimes miss is that if we're noticing or seeing burnout on our teams and in our organizations, um, we're oftentimes not having the right conversation about it. So we oftentimes look to very surface level self-care strategies and stress management strategies to fix what is actually a much more deep and complex problem. And so those self-care strategies aren't bad, they're an important component of, you know, a holistic, you know, well-being program at work. Um, they're just not the right tools to address the, the root causes of burnout because these are the root causes of burnout. So the first one is unmanageable workload. If you have a workload issue or problem at work, you need a workload solution to it. By far and away, especially over the last three plus years, unmanageable workload and that work sustainability idea have been by far the biggest drivers of burnout that I have seen in the groups with whom I've worked. So that's a really big one. The second one followed actually pretty closely. And this one surprised me a little bit. I was not as surprised about the unmanageable workload, but another really big driver of burnout is lack of recognition. So that can be, I don't hear thank you a whole lot, if at all, feel like I'm doing some good things. I'm making a positive impact on my team and in my organization. I don't hear about it. That can be, I'm working at a certain level, but I feel like my title doesn't match the work that I'm doing. That could be, I don't feel like I'm being tapped to be part of important meetings or conversations. I feel like I've earned that. I feel like I have the expertise to, to bring that to the table. The third one is lack of community. And so companies are really wrestling with this right now as they continue to think about hybrid models of work and how much remote work to allow because that sense of community is really important. Am I showing up to a team that's cohesive, where I know people have my back, where I feel cared about, cared for, I know my leader has my back also. Lack of autonomy is another one. So that is, I don't have a sense of flexibility and control at all around my world of work. Number five would be values disconnect. And so I have certain things, certain things that I value about work, certain things that I want about my work to help me feel fulfilled. And my values don't match my company's values. My values don't match my team's values. And when there's a big mismatch that way, there that can be a source of stress. And then the last one is unfairness. So unfairness, again, can be a whole lot of things. It can be favoritism. It's not what you do, it's who you know, and that's how people get promoted. It can be there's a lot of closed door meetings, there's a lot of whispers, no one's really telling us is something happening or about to happen, I don't know what's going on. And it can also be organizational politics and red tape. It can be like, I just, I need a simple answer to something and I got to fill out three forms and wait four weeks and ask seven different people before I can simply go forward with what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. So you can kind of hear or sense in those items, the depth that we have to be kind of shifting the conversation if we want to really make a dent in a lot of the burnout rates that we're seeing. Well, you mentioned unmanageable workload. Why should we capitalize on small wins? 
So this is interesting. So I had a leader in one of my programs, you know, we were talking about this list and, you know, he was relaying, you know, some of the issues that he was noticing on his team. And he looked at that list of six and he said, seems like if you could just get the recognition piece right, that would help everything else feel better or run better. And it was an interesting thing for me to think about, because I think what he was saying is that when people feel appreciated and feel like they matter, some of these other things that cause us a lot of stress might not feel as stressful. It's not that the stress is going to go away, but it might not sting as much. That sense of recognition, that remembrance and telling people when they've done something well, or there's been a win or a success on a team, when we talk about that with frequency, when we remember the small like 1% or 2% ways, either ourselves or our teams are achieving the goals the in the in the midst of all the complexity and certainty and, and stress that we're seeing at work, when we're very keenly aware of those things, the research tells us that's a very motivational state to be in. So if I'm bogged down by this heavy sense of work, having that knowledge and feeling that sense of engagement and motivation is one of those things that can help me push through it. Paula, what results have you seen with people or businesses that have implemented your recommendations? This is interesting because I feel like a lot of my work has been on the education front because a lot of companies and leaders and teams have been thinking about burnout in the wrong way. Part of what I do is just shifting them at least into starting to have the right conversation. But it's been really rewarding to see teams just um, implementing in my book what I call TNTs or tiny noticeable things, things like remembering those small wins and successes, things as simple as giving somebody an explanation or a rationale or the backstory for a policy shift or a change. One legal department that I worked with is now implementing or using the ABCs. So that trio of autonomy and belonging and challenge, needing people needing to feel a sense of challenge and growth at work in their onboarding process and in their mentoring activities, they're making sure that they're asking about those traits for people and what develops that for people in other moments in a very dedicated way. So it's been great to hear, you know, just, just little stories about how, gosh, the simple shift in implementing your thank you plus exercise has caused a world of difference for my team in terms of how we, you know, are showing up for each other each day or starting meetings in a different way, for example, because we just now feel that more keenly aware of that sense of recognition, just really small strategies that I advocate for folks to try. We're speaking with Paula Davis, founder, CEO of the Stress and Resilience Institute. Paula, is there anything I've not asked that you'd like to add? Oh, that's a really great question. I think so many firms, so many organizations have taken that first step into having the conversation about well-being and burnout and the traits that are impactful for teams to, to grow their resilience and engagement and sort of the opposite of burnout. I'd love to see more organizations and leaders and teams start to kind of take that 2.0 step. So we've got some information about it. Now, how can we start to measure and assess for those core six traits on our team so that we have a very keen idea of what's truly kind of driving our stress issues and start to implement some coaching, perhaps? I think there's a lot of coaching for leaders. Um, I think there's a gap in terms of you know, leaders really developing the skill set sort of on the psychology and motivational side to help their teams. And so... I guess if I had a wish for like a next step or how I see this work or my work evolving, it would be that. Paula, how can people get in contact with you? The hub of all of my information is really my website, which is stress and resilience, all spelled out, dot com. But I'm also on LinkedIn as well. So you can find me on LinkedIn uh, at Paula Davis. Paula, thank you very much for joining us today on the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thank you so much, Brian. My sincere thanks to Paula for joining us today. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on YouTube and over 20 podcast directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCF-ORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. 
a strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me for business consulting or with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Paula, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol's on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 89, our guest will be Earl Adams, discussing business finances. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCFORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.